Right on. Hey, thanks, thanks Rod. Dan. Yeah, you bet, Dan. Thank you. If you can stay on the line, we'll do a little Q&A with you. And uh, gentlemen, if you can stay on, we'd love to have you engage in this part of our discussion, which always is very, very rich. Dan's provided some discussion questions. And uh, Dan, let me ask you, uh, you know, what's your, what's your favorite Warrior movie? That's the question you asked. Tell us your answer to that. Yeah. You know, I'm, um, I, I would have to say um, the one with uh, Dustin Dahl, I think it's Hacksaw Ridge maybe, where the young medic who goes into battle without a gun. Is that the name of it, Greg? You're nodding your head. Is that yes. the name of that movie? Yes, it is. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. so he's he's pulling his wounded buddies out of combat, right? And he went in with with sense of conviction that the Lord was on his side and he was able to uh, be a mighty warrior in such a way that, I mean, he's a hero and he didn't even carry a gun. Wow, you know, so powerful uh, for me. And of course, there's sports movies too that have warrior elements in them as well. Um, of course, the Hoosiers movie, in my opinion, basketball movie, greatest movie ever made, right? <laughs> but it's sort of that David and Goliath story. It's a picture of, you know, the small school taking on the big school and winning. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some really powerful ones. And what makes it special to me is that it, it is that it accesses something in, in in my heart and it sets it free it's like it touches a wounded place that sort of gave up wanting to be that hero wanting to be that warrior and so those movies breathe life into those that, that's in, inspire means breathe life into right so those that's why i asked that question quite honestly on the discussion question watch those movies that breathe life into your heart that way and keep in mind you know women didn't write hacksaw ridge women didn't write hoosiers woman didn't write braveheart you know those are masculine stories about masculine kinds of issues and yes, there's women involved, and we understand that, and we need Eve, right? I mean, make no mistake, not good for a man to be alone. That's what the father said, right? So we don't want that. We want Eve involved too. But you see, that masculine heart has wounds in it that have really kind of given up on becoming that kind of warrior. So anyway, those movies inspire me in that way. So Dan, I, I'm glad. Uh, I, I just knew for sure you're going to mention Hoosiers because I said you didn't bring it if I was going to bring it up. That, that, that is a that is a warrior. That's a warrior movie, and it's a great illustration. And uh, and I and I, I'll, I'll just give you my two my two uh, favorites, uh, and then a third sports one is, of course, Gladiator and Braveheart. In fact, if those if, the, if I'm just kind of rummaging through the TV and those are on immediately, no matter where it's at in the movie. I'm all in, you know, till the yes. end. I mean, it just, it stirs me. And then, um, and then uh, uh, the, the sports movie that, that, that gets me is uh, uh, Faith, uh, Remember the Titans, you know, and that's that got oh, a yeah. kind of warrior spirit to it, you know, and especially the scene when, uh, when Denzel Washington takes those young boys to Gettysburg. And I mean, I just, man, I just get stirred. And uh, it's, yes. it's it's that warrior within. It's what it, what's what's emerging. Anybody right. else got a favorite uh, that they'd like to throw out? On Dan's first question, favorite warrior movie. What stirs you about it? I like Chariots of Fire. Oh yeah, Chariots of Fire. I don't know the timing of it back back when. Uh, just a great movie of a man standing for his faith and yet running for God's pleasure. You know. Um, just, just a lot of good principles in that movie, and and a young man that stood up to the to the Olympic committee, you know, and says, "I'm not going to do it," I'm, you know, and yet God found him a way to run in that and win that. The great hey, Jerry, story, Jerry, classic. I saw, I saw that movie uh, probably six months ago. Again, stumbled upon it, and I was locked in and. Uh, and that, that movie just brings me to tears. It really yeah. does, because yeah. there's something in there that just really gets me. So thank you for bringing that one up. That's good. So well done. 
Anybody else? Hey, Rod. Yes. Hey, how about the Cinderella Man with uh, another Russell movie that uh, kind of comes from uh, a point where his career is about over and he's, uh, he's just kind of taking what he can do and, uh, of course, becomes the Jim, James J. Braddock, you know, becomes a world champion, you know, kind of a, another David and Goliath style uh, type story, too. That's good, Steve. Thank you. Yep. Well, the guy who played Max Bear in that movie was a beast. Uh, my, I think one of my favorites, and I've, I'll, as soon as we stop talking, I'll have five others pop in my head. But one of my favorites is the series that was put together by C.S. Lewis with The Hobbit, and they finally put it on the screen. And uh, for some reason, out of all the great characters in that movie and all the great stories, Samwise was my favorite because he was faithful and dedicated and risked his life for Frodo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those are rich. Hey, Rod, just a, just a quick word on uh, those emotions that get stirred uh, because, you know, the nature of those great movies is that they access something that bypasses our brains, right? We understand that that's a picture on a screen. It, it may not be real. And yet there's something in our hearts that's moved to tears many times, right? So what if, and I believe this to be true, but I'm asking it as a form of a question. What if God is using those segments of those movies to, to, to restore and whisper something into your warrior spirit, warrior heart? And, and, and to kindle that longing. I mean, I think there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's tears of sadness in that because we're longing for heaven. We know it's not quite as it should be. And yet there's always tears of joy in there as well because there's the sense of possibility as well. And so I would just encourage you in those moments as you're watching movies or experiencing things that have that kind of appeal where it, it really does move you emotionally, uh, just take a moment to thank God and ask him, mm -hmm. Lord, what would you have me experience in this? Talk to me, Lord, and, mm -hmm. and restore me in this moment, because those things are, are very powerful. And I think the Lord uses them in mighty ways. So I just share that to say that those are all great illustrations and, and great opportunities. Yeah. Hey, Dan, and I'm glad you really brought up the Naismith Project. I was, I apologize, I didn't mention it, but I'm glad you did on the front end. And I know the story, you know the story, but Naismith was a warrior. And I hope and pray that when the movie comes out, that kind of, that kind of emotion uh, that we're talking about today will emerge. I know, I know um, there's a really good chance it's going to happen because you're involved, but it, Give us a sense of that real quick, just that warrior spirit that James Naismith had. Yes. So he has this calling, sense of calling very, very early on uh, as, a, as a child. And it's almost like the enemy was trying to take him out very, very early. Both of his parents died of typhoid. So he's an orphan. And talking about having no father figure no, no mother in his life to sort of vector him uh, to, to, to be that resource as only a parent can be. And so later in his life, as he's inventing, you know, basketball and he's going off to the YMCA and so on, there are many other body blows along the way uh, where, for example, his youngest brother, uh, dies of a ruptured appendix while he's home on Christmas break one one uh, mm -hmm. holiday season. And then a little later in the story, his wife, his newlywed wife, um, has a bout with typhoid, the same disease that took his beloved mother and father away. She does not die, but she loses her hearing. She's nearly totally deaf mm -hmm. as a newlywed couple, right? And then... Sometime later, Naismith actually goes off to fight World War I. You know, clearly, the warrior spirit is in this man. And when he comes back, he realizes that the university has handed his coaching duties of the sport that he birthed. It's like his child, right? 
they hand off the coaching duties to this young upstart who has a very different view than his own named Fog Allen. <laughs> and so all of these body blows happen. And, and you can imagine the Job-like moment, sort of throwing up your hands going, God, I don't understand. God, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. And it's very deep and very powerful to roll ahead to the conclusion. I'm not going to give it away quite yet. But at the 1936 Olympic Games, when the game of basketball is played as a medal event for the first time in history, Berlin, Germany, that's Nazi Germany, by the way. Naismith sort of has this pinnacle sort of moment where the Lord has a way of sort of coming full circle in his life to say, see, I never left you. I never forsake you. This is what it was about, James. Mm. And so just a, a, a phenomenal picture of a warrior's life where he's enduring body blows, crisis of faith, lots of issues going on, and yet he still fights hard for the truth. And the quote, the killer quote out of all this, uh, when asked, and this is back in 1888, men, check this out. The killer quote that Naismith wrote on his application to the YMCA, the question was, why do you want to be a physical education teacher coach. And this is what he wrote. And many of us come from this place, by the way. We've had coaches and and the use of sports in our lives. Okay, here is is what he says. To use the power of athletics Mm -hmm. to shape the future fathers of the nation and save some from sin and vice. Mm -hmm. Now that's 1888, fellas. And so... He never made a dime from the game of basketball. He never sold a trademark or any of that. He, it was his gift. And he saw it as a tool to help young men in particular uh, become better fathers, become better professionals in life, become citizens of heaven. That was his vision. And so the power of athletics, I, I, I'm so encouraged uh, by that. And, you know, a lot of military training <clears throat> installations use intramural sports uh, competitions, the the academies have intramural programs that they take very, very seriously because those are shaping warrior attitudes, shaping warrior. And and by that, I also mean great teammate, like camaraderie issues. Anyway, I could go on for days about this stuff. But yeah, thanks, Rod, for for introducing Doc into the conversation because he really is... uh, you know, a, a later symbol of that kind of warrior in, in many, many ways. Yeah. Thank you. And, and one of the reasons I brought it up is sometimes when you think warrior, you're thinking, you know, sword and shield and, you know, warfare, which is very, very vivid, but there's a bigger and broader warrior spirit. And, and Naismith had that. So thank yeah, you. For sure. Thank you for bringing that, that point up. Guys, any other thoughts for Dan? Uh, you, you got some great questions there. If there's a question that really stirs you, you want to respond to, or just uh, part of this discussion, you have something you want to add in, we'd love to hear from you. One, one thing I would, I would mention is, um, I had a, you mentioned in this in this uh, lesson, uh, Wild at Heart by Eldridge. I, yes. I read quick maybe 10, 15 years ago, and I can still remember some of the feelings of power I got from reading that book. Matter of fact, it got me in more trouble because I attempted things that I never would have attempted before because of that book. But uh, really, I don't know what there is in that book, but uh, it just really does something for me when I read it. Matter of fact, it's, you know, it's been a long time since I've read it. I need to get a hold of it again because I need to get inspired again because that did more to inspire me than any other book I've ever read or any movie I've ever watched. So just thought I'd pass yes. that on. If you've never read that book, you really got to get a hold of that book <laughs> and read it because it's a great book for, for this kind of a topic. I would, I would certainly second that. Uh, and I would also just encourage everybody, including myself, as I say this, um, I'm reading another one of Eldridge's books called Get Your Life Back. And he makes a very specific reference to the whole use of technology and quite frankly, the negative effects and where the Bible says, you know, David's writing, even in the first Psalm talking about meditating on God. Well, when we use our cell phones, we're not really meditating on anything. We're looking for headlines. We're looking for bullets. 
we swipe and move on to the next thing. We mouse click on something, we hit the phone, and it's just a constant steady blur of flitting from one thing to the next. There's no meditation. And what he's describing in the book is that the brain is really being restructured to flit and to bounce around, meaning we're losing the capacity to meditate on God. Powerful, powerful, powerful. And so again, talking about mentoring the 21st century, you know, those young people now that have grown up with technology, being encouraged to use it more and more and more. Um, there's just some, some things that obviously can be resisted and come against. But yeah, Carl, I totally agree what you're saying about John Eldridge and his material. There really is a freshness of spirit in that that I haven't found really in any other authors, quite honestly. And maybe it's just the season that I'm in in my life. But um, for such a time as this, and, and those books really are speaking in a powerful way. So I'm glad you shared that. Thank you. Hey, Carl, I'm sorry. I didn't catch the name of the book. Well, it's it's he refers to it here on the front page, but it's Wild at Heart. Oh, and yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I just really got stronger the more I read that. I've never had any book inspire me like that before. And like I said, I'm you know, jokingly saying I, I did volunteer. I went over my head in a lot of projects and uh, it helped me a lot, but I need to uh, I need to get that strength back again because I've kind of lost it. I mean, it's been a long time since I read that book, but it really does help you a lot, kind of boost your spirits and uh, and kind of show you who you really are as a man, you know, I mean, again, you know, maybe something you've never known or you've forgotten. So it's it's really good. Yeah. you never read that book. So I mentioned this to Dan at Sunday at church because I knew he's going to bring this up. And there is a, a new version. There is a plan called Wildlife with John Eldridge. It's a 12 day new version plan. And it's actually a video. And it's him interacting with four young dads, four young men who are on a journey, uh, on an adventure, and they're looking for some insights. And each segment, I'm going to guess, is about 10 to 15 minutes long. And it's it's really kind of a, a, a summation of Wild at Heart, but it's a video thing in 12 days called Wildlife. If you're interested, uh, easy, easy, easy to start on that plan today. And Carl, I, I will tell you, it will light your fire. It, it, it'll fire you up. Uh, even, you know, if you're not a reader or you just want to see something quick, you want to get the principles, they do an excellent job uh, on a new version with that uh, quick little plan. So it's, it's excellent. Oh, thanks. Okay, Any, anybody else? Hey, Dan, I appreciate uh, what you shared. Uh, I'm, I'm convicted in many ways. Uh, I was reminded of Hebrews 12, where it says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. Mm -hmm. And let us run with endurance a race set before us, fixing, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of God. And that challenges me every day. Yes. How much the world entangles me and sin itself. And that the call for all of us, us men, is to fix our eyes on Jesus and, mm -hmm. and to experience the joy and the truth of him. And I'm convicted about my phone. And it's so easy to get so distracted and not meditate on, on God's word and just to take, take the time just to, to be uh, Mary and not Martha, to set at his feet. So I appreciate what you shared, brother. Well, thank you, and and uh, yeah, just a, a a powerful kind of reminder for me. See, it, it was convicting for me as well as I'm reading and studying, and um, yeah, being that intentional about seeking the Lord. And and you know what? Sometimes for men, doing doing nothing is the hardest thing, right? Because we're men of action, uh, and yet there's something about even Jesus in the midst of the fray and in the midst of the, the noise and all of the craziness. And just when things were ramping up, the disciples are looking for him, like, where'd he go? 
And the book says, the, the text says he went away to pray. He, he, he got away from the multitude. And you know what? I think we need to do that too in, in some form or fashion. I know many of you are fishermen and you get out and you sort of hang out with God while you're fishing together. Awesome. There is beauty in that. And this is some of the language of Eldridge too. Carl, you'll know this to be true as well, right? Like the beauty, capital B-E-A-U-T-Y, isn't just Eve. There is beauty there for sure in the woman. But in terms of God's creation, there's something powerful in, uh, and redemptive in, in nature. Uh, in fact, I'm actually trying to put together a trip uh, out to Colorado. I don't know if John Eldridge is going to be involved or not. I'm, I'm kind of exploring that. Uh, but to get into the mountains for four or five days and just hang out with the Lord. Uh, my soul needs to be stretched. And my soul needs to be expanded. Uh, because the last 18 months has just been really chaotic in a lot of ways. Uh, and I'm sure many of you are feeling that as well. So I, I, you know, I would just encourage you to find that time. You, you know, when you need some time, your soul will tell you, uh, dude, this is too much. We, we need to go, let's go take a break. And so, yeah, I would just encourage you in that. Uh, and we have that great cloud of witnesses encouraging us in that too, Bob. So yeah, thank you for that verse. Really rich. Thank you. For, for me, that's, uh, I take my uh, kayak over to Lake Tacoma. And I've done, I found out for some reason, I go there with my son and he kayaks too. We do more talking and conversation there than any other time in our lives. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about just kind of floating around on a kayak and stuff on a lake. But uh, if you really want to just, you know, have a conversation and do some meditative thought, you know, that's a good place to do it too. So I yes. know what you're talking about. Well, just a quick flyby. I've been really impressed. If any of you guys know who Bear Grylls is. Uh, running wild with Bear Grylls. There's a TV show where, of course, he's a former British Special Forces guy, and he takes celebrities out, you know, into the wild, and they literally are they're doing all kinds of survival things, climbing, you know, steep cliffs and all that. But he has this really unique way of sort of getting them to peel back the layers of their lives. Uh, I don't know that I can confirm this 100%. I, I've heard him speak of his own faith a little bit. Um, so anyway, it's a cool story. It inspires me watching that because I see guys have their hearts accessed uh, out in the middle of Iceland, for example, or the desert of Utah, you know, the mountains and so on. Really cool. So yeah. All right. Anything else, gentlemen? We're about ready to wrap up here. Superb. Thank you, Dan. Great job. Uh, gentlemen, have a great rest of the day. God bless you.